let's talk about air compressors for a second. You can use different types. Um, I use every, not every type, that's exaggerating. I've used several types of air compressors to blow out sprinkler systems, and you can do it with any kind, pretty much. Basically, if it pushes compressed air, you can blow the system out. How you do it depends on what compressor you have, how long it takes, depends on what compressor you have. There's the reciprocating ones, which are usually electric. There's the rotary screw ones, which are usually diesel, sometimes gas, and those are usually towed behind a truck and quite expensive, but very efficient. I built one. Uh, it's an electric compressor, solar powered, and it has its own trailer. If you're interested in the solar power compressor trailer, uh, let me know in the comments below and subscribe. So then when I have a video come out, you'll know it, but it's a really cool trailer. So I'll show you that later. I have my favorites, which are usually the rotary screw compressors, the tow behind ones. Those are so efficient. But if you're just going to blow out a handful of them, you can use an electric reciprocating air compressor. It'll work fine. It takes a little longer, but it works good. Here is an electric air compressor. This is a reciprocating air compressor, meaning that it fills the tank, dumps it, fills the tank, dumps it. So it's reciprocating. It's 29 gallons, 165 PSI, 5.3 CFM at 90 PSI. 1.8 running horsepower. This compressor works great for your own home or doing one or two houses, maybe you and the neighbors or a couple of them in a day. But this one takes a little bit longer than your rotary screw compressor, which is the, usually the diesel tow behind ones. But this one, you can adjust the pressure. It works really good. I would recommend one of these if you're just doing a couple of them. So here's another type of air compressor. It's electric. This is the little pancake air compressor. They're usually like six gallons. Sometimes they're smaller than that. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger. These will work, but it will take you a long time to do it. And it's not a guarantee to get all the air out. For most home applications, this is perfectly acceptable, but that's what these little guys are. They work, but if you're gonna do a lot of blowouts, go with a bigger tank. Let's talk about how much pressure you need to blow out a sprinkler system and how much volume or CFM you need. There's arguments about that. Of course there is. You don't want a lot of pressure. You want more volume is the key. A lot of people will say, well, if you don't have the volume, turn up the pressure. That works, but it's risky. A lot of people use the electric reciprocating compressors and those you kind of have to have higher pressure to push the air out. That's why they're not used often by professionals, although they are used by professionals sometimes. The more important thing is having the right amount of pressure. I've blown out sprinkler systems with as little as 50 PSI. Usually it's around 80 PSI. Um, I still keep my head out of the way of any parts or sprinkler heads. I've had them blow off before. And so I try and always wear safety glasses, of course, and stay away from any parts like that with my head. But I've blown it out as little as 50 PSI. I've gone as high as 150 PSI. I don't recommend it. Learn from that. Keep it about 80 PSI and you should be good. Now, CFM, what does that mean? Here you can see 5.3 SCFM at 90 PSI. So basically you're looking at cubic feet per minute. So this one has a large air tank. It's got capabilities of going to 165 PSI. When you get to 90 PSI, you should be pushing 5.3 cubic feet of air through these hoses. So how many cubic feet do you need? How much CFM do you need for blowing out a sprinkler system? There is a formula. Basically, they say, take your gallons per minute that your sprinkler system uses and divide it by 7.5. That should give you the amount of CFM of air you need to blow out your sprinkler system. I'll give you an example. An average home usually has between 10 and 15 gallons per minute with a sprinkler system, depending on how it's designed. Most of them are less than that. So let's say 10, right? So your sprinkler system zone, one sprinkler system zone is using 10 gallons a minute. Divide that by 7.5, you get one and a half or something. I'm just throwing that out there because it doesn't matter. Two CFM or less, basically. So if you had two CFM, technically the formula says that you should be able to blow out your sprinkler zone. But it's not just about 
a burst of volume at once. You have to push that volume through hundreds of feet of pipe, possibly, or thousands of feet of pipe, and then through several different sprinkler heads. So if you see a compressor that says 1.5 or 2 CFM, that means I can blow out my sprinkler system without a problem. You could blow it out, but it's going to take time to do it. On the other side of the spectrum, you see those rotary screw compressors, the tow behinds, they're very efficient. Those have instant cubic feet as per demand. So if there's a big sprinkler system, they usually adjust, especially the newer ones, and they'll push more out. That is a constant flow of CFM, and it pushes all that water out nice and evenly through all the heads. It goes quick, and it does a great job. But how much do you need there? Well, you see some that say 500 on the side, 225, 285, 185, 90. You see a lot of those. If you're doing mostly residential blowouts or you're doing just a few homes or you and your neighbors and you rented one of those for the day, that's awesome. You don't need one that's 250 CFM. You barely need one that's 185. If you got an air compressor that was 85 CFM, you'd be fine. Now, if you're doing commercial projects, large locations, you might want more than that. Uh, there's been a few places where I've had to use two of those large air compressors at, I think one of them was 185 and one was 225 to blow out the sprinkler system efficiently. It's rare when you'll need that, but for the most part, if you had 85 CFM to 185 CFM on a tow behind, you can do 99% of homes and even commercial accounts. So the question, I guess, is should you buy an air compressor? Well, it depends. If you're going to be doing a few, then it might not be worth it. But if you are, let's say, a homeowner that will be blowing out your sprinklers at your home, maybe just one time, maybe don't buy one. It's not worth it. Just pay someone. But if you're going to do it more than one year, buy an air compressor. They're a couple hundred dollars. You'll make that up in the first, the second year. You can get a pancake air compressor or you can get a larger one. Should you buy, if you're a business owner, a reciprocating air compressor to blow out people's homes? Well, yes, because you'll get it done and you can get into the market cheap. But if you know you're going to do it for more than five years, spend the money and buy one that is a rotary screw, one of the diesel run engines that you tow behind your truck. It will pay for itself in five years and after that it's gravy so we've talked about basic tools you'll need for blowing out your sprinkler system we've talked about a couple different air hose connections and types of air hoses and some air compressors now we'll get more into the process